Okay, I am continuing on with my Reset Your Age series, and today we are gonna talk about blood pressure. And I have got some amazing science for you, so get ready. I'm gonna show you some really, like I boiled it down to three strategies. I'm gonna show you some really cool science that says you're in control of your blood pressure, that your destiny is not to be on medication for the rest of, life, of your life. You have way more control than that. So get ready, here we go. Okay, you guys, I am going to bring to you today the research, the most current research that I found on fasting and your blood pressure. So this is a part of my Reset Your Age series. Um, I think it's incredibly important that we dive into some alternative solutions to high blood pressure other than just going on medications. And so I also think it's incredibly important that we look at the research and some clinical studies that have been done on humans in this particular case. So I've got three major studies I'm gonna to bring to you. So, um, so sit tight, I've put all the references in the show notes here so you, you will have the video notes so that you can go back and dive into those researches, uh, research studies if you want. But let's start off with a couple of key principles that I want you to understand. The first is, and I, I teach you guys this all the time, and, and the idea is really you want to always ask yourself when a symptom appears, why is that symptom appearing? Why is your blood pressure going up? So uh, many times we're told things are genetic, and we're not, it, it's, I call that like a trash can diagnosis. It's like, let me just plump everything into bad genes. Well, we know through epigenetics that with lifestyle changes, you can change your genes. So if you have high blood pressure and you've been told you've had high blood pressure because of your genetics, the first thing I'm gonna ask you to realize is that you can change your genes. We know this through epigenetics. So the, um, the second thing is the blood pressure is going up in the body because of inflammation. So, you know, if this was a blood vessel and the, you're eating bad food, you're under a lot of stress, you're not moving your body, um, and you're creating more inflammation inside of the internal environment of your body, these blood vessels are going to start to get really inflamed. And over time, I wish I, had, I could, could actually see inside this thing, over time, the inner lining of those blood vessels are going to thicken and they call that your endothelial lining is going to thicken and it's going to start to create a constant higher blood pressure. So blood pressure doesn't typically, like chronically high blood pressure, doesn't just start haphazardly. It, ha it starts because there's a chronic inflammatory situation that has been brewing in your body for years and years and years, and now your blood vessels have adapted. Now that lining is so thick um, that it, it's, you're in a chronic state of inflammation. So that's a, a, a one key thing I want you to realize. The other thing is if you look at the nervous system and the major controller of blood pressure, your blood pressure is controlled by your brain stem, which sits right up here. So if anything injures your brain stem, if anything puts pressure on that brain stem, then all of a sudden your blood pressure is gonna go up. And I'll show you some really interesting studies I found on WebMD that show when the atlas, the top part of your bone, uh, of your spine is out of alignment, that your blood pressure will go up. So we, we, it's not a mystery, it's more of you really diving in and understanding your personal situation. Why is your blood pressure up? Why is your chronic inflammation up? Um, is there something that's damaging or pinching your brainstem? These are really smart questions to start asking yourself, okay? Second thing before I dive in to all the research here is I want you to realize that to actually accurately measure blood pressure, you need to be uncaffeinated, you need to have sat for about 30 minutes um, in, a, in a quiet room, and then you take your blood pressure. Uh, the other day I went to the dentist. I don't really love going to the dentist, and I, I was in a traffic jam, I was running late, they took my blood pressure, and my blood pressure was high. 
of course, I sat in traffic. I'm at a place I don't really want to be. Um, and yes, that that is uh, it's it's going to be natural that my blood pressure would be high. So make sure you're not getting a false reading. That you're actually getting a consistent reading with a, in a controlled environment. Okay, with that, let's dive in to how if you have high blood pressure, how do we start to bring your blood pressure down? So there are are four things. No, three major things that I want you to look at first definitely need to look at your diet. So if, you're, if your medical doctor said, look at your diet, I'm, I'm I, in 100% in alignment with that. Um, where I want you to look for is there was a, a st- many studies that have done uh, that they're realizing that sugar, high sugar, has as much of an impact on your blood pressure as salt, if not more. So I'll link a study in here they did that showed that it was high fructose corn syrup was the worst of all the sugars and that if people did 24 ounces of soda a day it increased their blood pressure so and it this was on webmd and they actually at the end of the of the study or at the end of the article they said okay so first thing you do webmd is you stop eating processed foods with high fructose corn syrup You've got bad oils, you've got bad sugars in there. So stop that first. That has to be, you know, there's no magic anything if you're not stopping that. Well, now think about this. How many of you have walked into your doctor's office to only be told you have high blood pressure, you need, you're stressed, you're overweight, let's put you on medication, but you're not told, oh my gosh, you maybe need to get off your Doritos and your soda pop. It's all the cookies, the crackers, all that fake food is is causing damage to this lining, to this inner lining of these blood vessels, okay? So my first recommendation is get off the processed foods. Second recommendation is let's look at the research behind fasting. And I have three studies I wanna bring to you. The first study was, and they're all current, was June 18th, and it was done on men with prediabetes. And what they did is two very important things. They gave them a six hour feeding window and they had them stop eating after, they couldn't eat dinner or anything after 3 p.m. So they were fasting towards the back half of the day and they did that for five weeks. And what they found is that there were several several things. One is that their insulin sensitivity improved. They also saw a B cell responsiveness. So this is a major, uh, B cells are a major immune system. Um, They also, of course, they didn't say in this study how much it improved by, but they saw an improvement in blood pressure, and then they saw a reduction in oxidative stress. Um, Now, what they found was so interesting in this particular study is that they found that all of that happened without losing a pound. So when your doctor says you got to lose weight to lose blood pressure, this study say no, you just got to you got to sh- go into a shorter feeding window and a longer fasting window. And then I, I do think there's some um, some magic there to eating dinner um, before three o'clock and not eating after that. I think that also um, helped as well keeps cortisol down as you go to sleep. So if you eat a big meal before you go to sleep, you're now keep have cortisol at a higher level. Okay, so that was study number one. Study number two, this was done on calorie restriction. Um, They didn't say how much calorie restriction. I'm gonna say like fast mimicking diet style. And it's it's not really a study, it's a review review of all the evidence that this, this particular article found from March, 2018. They found three major things happened when people kept their calorie count low. And one is, one is that they're both their uh, systolic blood pressure and their diastolic went down. They also saw an increase in a gene S, S, um, S1R21, which is a nutrient sensor for anti-aging. So they saw an anti-aging gene go up and they saw an increase in nitric oxide, which is helps with the endothelial lining function of the inner lining of that blood vessel. It helped relieve some of the inflammation in there. It dilates that blood vessel. So it took the pressure out of the actual, when you have an increase in nitric oxide, you get an actual release of some of the pressure in the blood vessel, okay? 
third study, so that, that was in like a, a meta-analysis. They looked at, at several studies together and that's what they discovered. Um, third study was done on periodic fasting versus what they call DASH. So DASH is dietary changes only. And what they found in, in this study, this was primarily looking at systolic blood pressure. Now, what they did that was so interesting in the study is that one group, they just gave them periodic fasting. They did not say how long in the study after diving through the study in, um, in real detail. I think it was just intermittent fasting. But they gave one group um, more fasting. They did the periodic fasting and, um, and a few lifestyle changes. They didn't say which ones. And then the other group, they gave just changes. They just said, change your diet. That's all you, all you need to do. So both groups saw an improvement in, systo in systolic um, blood pressure, which is great. Um, but the fasting group had an added benefit. So they saw changes in their gut microbiome. So really positive changes that they um, identified that improved um, good bacteria in the gut. We've been talking about that. Um, they also saw a massive change in an immune response on, across all anti-inflammatory markers. So CD4 cells, T cells, the, the immune cells that rush in when there's a chronic inflammation uh, scenario, that the people they put on periodic fasting, they found that they had a massive increase in these anti-inflammatory markers. So they're bringing inflammation down. They also found that their um, body weight went down and their BMI went down. So, and that was for seven days. They did diet only, fasting, uh, primarily fasting, compared the two groups, both those blood pressures improved, but the fasting group had more indicators that long-term, this would be a better deal because you're bringing weight down, you're bringing inflammation down, right? So how cool is that? Okay, the third thing. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is get off the processed foods. Like just get that crap out of you, it's killing you and it's definitely raising your blood pressure. Second, start to implement a fasting lifestyle. Seems like that's a common solution here on my channel, but if you dive into the research like I've seen it, it's, it, it's crazy what fasting can do for your health. It's, it's insane. Like I, everybody should be doing this. So that second thing is you wanna in, start to bring in a fasting lifestyle. Okay, third thing, and this cannot be overlooked, is let's go back to this brain stem. So your brain stem regulates appetite, it regulates your, um, your circadian rhythms, it re regulates temperature, and it regulates blood pressure. So this is a study and, and it's published on Web WebMD. It was actually done way back in 2007 that found if you had a misaligned atlas and you got that atlas realigned, so if the atlas came back into balance, that, that patient's systolic pressure was going down by 14 points and their diastolic pressure went down by eight points. Now, here's what I wanna point out, and I actually pulled the quote out from this WebMD article. The guy, the, the, um, the guy of the article, the author of the study, basically the study leader said, this procedure, what they did is they went in and they just realigned the atlas. So they measured the misalignment of the atlas and then they realigned it. And that's where with chiropractic adjustments, they started to see this, uh, the systolic and diastolic come down. But this is what the study leader said, is that this procedure has the effect of not one, but two blood pressure medications given in combination, said George Barkas, MD. And it seems to be adverse event free and we saw no side effects and no problems. So if you have a misaligned atlas, it could be a major contributor to your high blood pressure. So if you're one of those people that you're changing your diet, you're fasting, your pr blood pressure is still not coming down, you gotta get to a chiropractor that can measure that atlas and tell you if it's in alignment or out of alignment. It could, it could be that simple as just realign that atlas and yeah, now the body goes, thank you, whew, and it can like calm down, pressures off the, off the um, brain stem and your blood pressure is restored. So there you go, three very 
I think easy things to do. Um, you know, the, the the challenge, one of the major challenges that I see when we're on these medications for long periods of time is we're not addressing the underlying issue. And if you don't address the other underlying issue, then it's going to show up as another disease. So just because you have high blood pressure, you take a medication and then your med your blood pressure goes down, it does not mean that you're that that you're living in a healthy body. It means that your blood pressure is down temporarily, but the inflammation is still there. So we always want to go to the root cause. We always want to try to understand what the body's telling us. So there you go. That's blood pressure in a nutshell. And again, as always, I just hope that helps and that really lands with you guys because you were born in a miracle. You were born to be awesome. You were born to be medication free. You were born to thrive with your health. You were not born to get on medication and start as you age, take more and more and more and more. That's not how your body was designed. Your body was designed to live 120 years. It's not designed to be on 10 medications at 60. Okay, so as always, questions, let me know if that's helpful. Let me know if the research studies are helpful. Give me feedback. Um, if you have some great success stories, let us know that as well. And um, I will do cholesterol, cardiovascular health in another, another video. But as always, hope that helps.